This is a 2003 Lexus GX470. The Lexus GX470 is really kind of a luxury version of the Toyota 4Runner. They're built on the same platform, um, but it kind of finds its place between the 4Runner and a Toyota Land Cruiser. I've always liked Toyota Land Cruisers, but I feel that they're a little bit too wide and just too large in general. And so I think that the Lexus GX470 takes a lot of similar design cues of the Land Cruiser and a lot of the capabilities of the Land Cruiser and puts it in a more uh, kind of smaller, nicer package in general. Um, the GX470 has a very European look to it. Big reason for that is because it's sold as the Toyota Land Cruiser in European markets. The Lexus GX470 was produced between 2003 and about 2008 and was replaced with the Lexus GX460 in 2009. The name of the Lexus comes from the engine. It's a uh, 4.7 liter V8, which actually, um, it's a pretty nice engine. It gets pretty good gas mileage and has a fair amount of power. Inside, I really like the styling of the Lexus. Um, Got a very simple design to it. Um, many versions of the Lexus GX470 come with a Mark Levinson sound system. They do also have a bass system, so that's an extra. Um, kind of following suit with the Toyota Land Cruiser, um, the GX470 is very capable off-road. You can see over here on the right, it's got four-wheel drive low and high. The, GX470 actually comes in all-wheel drive, but you do have the ability to change the four-wheel drive between low and high, depending on your speed. You can see here you've got descent control uh, for going downhills if you're off-road. And then the GX470 also comes with an air suspension. So you can see up here it's got settings for comfort and sport or in between. And then you can raise the height of the vehicle, raise and lower the height of the vehicle as well, giving you a little bit of extra ground clearance. Right up here, you've got locking rear differential, which helps on a, you know, more difficult off-roading. You can also see the controls for the heated seats there. Um, the Lexus GX470 comes with a third row seat. So that's one real nice advantage over a Toyota 4Runner because they get comparable gas mileage, um, but you have the extra capability of the third row seat. To access the third row seat, you've got a handle right here. You just flip that, that flips, and then that comes up. With the rear seats, similarly, you can fold the seat down. So fold the seat down that way. And then there is a lever right here that you can pull, allowing the seat to come up to the side. And then that little strap connects up to the top and the seats store to the side, giving you nice access if you want to put larger items in. The, uh, the door on the Lexus GX470 opens to the side, which is an unusual feature about this car. Um, this specific model is also fitted with a GPS, or not a GPS, a, a navig or a DVD player with a rear TV. It's also got the sunroof in it. Uh, the Lexus GX470 comes with quite a few features, some that are nice and others that are unnecessary. One is when you put the key into the ignition, you can see that the steering wheel adjusts. Uh, to me, not really necessary, but it's kind of nice if you're trying to put your shoes on or something before you start the vehicle. Also, when I turn the key, unique feature about the GX470 the is, Lexus link system is active. you get to hear that lovely voice every time you turn it on. Drives me a little bit crazy. Um, the Lex or the link system is controlled up here um, for services. It's basically another version, another version of OnStar, and so it allows you to um, contact um, emergency services in case of an accident or other various services. Um, I have read on blogs that you can actually deactivate the. Um, that system so that you don't get that warning every time that you turn it on by taking it to the dealer and that they typically do that 
free of charge. See up here you've got garage control so you can program your garage door through the push of a button. So that's kind of a nice feature as well about the GX470. You got controls for the sunroof here as well. Um, and then here on the screen, so you've got all your controls. So we've got audio off right now, but here we've got all of our presets for radio stations. Um, if you go to your climate control, um, it's all very user friendly. You basically just push the button for whatever you want to go to, and then the screen's very self explanatory. So you can choose where you want the air to go, um, how much air you want, whether you want AC or not. And so that's pretty nice. If you go to info, number settings on here, so you can go to like the calendar. Um, oh, went to navigation there. Uh, if we go to calendar, so there you get a calendar for the month. Um, if you go back, again, you can look at your maintenance schedule, um, change language. Um, if we go to display, you can actually set it so that the screen's always off. I usually do that because I don't like seeing the screen all the time. Um, you go to menu, got some additional settings there set up. And then, of course, there's navigation. And so you can see that when you're using the vehicle. Um, it's got a cassette deck, um, also a CD player. So really, you know, any option that you would expect to have in any car. Um, inside, the Lexus drives pretty nice. For an SUV of its size, it um, rides rather smooth and very quiet. The steering is one of the things that's most impressive about the Lexus. Having driven a lot of American SUVs and trucks with very loose steering, uh, it's surprising for a vehicle of this size and being a true truck how tight the steering is. Um, no real play in it, which is nice, just a tiny little bit. The uh, Lexus has a 4.7 liter V8, as I mentioned, and uh, it's a nice size engine for this vehicle. We've been able to pull um, a heavy load with a full load of eight people inside and it's got adequate power for that, and yet it still gets fairly decent gas mileage. You can see right up here that we're averaging about 19.4 between city and highway driving at the moment. I've found doing highway driving that I can get up to as high as 22 on fairly flat highway driving. In town, that of course drops down to about 17 on average for me. So I typically get between about 17 and 22 miles per gallon. Obviously that would vary depending on how you drive and the type of city that you live in. GX470 accelerates fairly well. Let's see here. Got a nice sound. See that it's got a pretty nice sound to it in accelerating. Um, that was not pushing the gas down entirely, that was just applying a good amount of pressure to it. And you can see that it also shifts really well. Um, when accelerating. The one thing that I am not a huge fan of when driving the GX470 is that it doesn't corner that well for a large SUV. I think um, many other large SUVs corner a lot better. It tends to roll a little bit. In general, it high speeds. It seems to drive very smooth, very quiet. 